episode 18 title of the radio enable learning course is energy physics unit 5 energy from solar in this episode 18 we will discuss about solar radiation measurements measurement of solar radiation are important because of the increasing number of solar heating and cooling applications and their need to accurate solar irradiation data to predict performance experimental determination of the energy transfer to a surface by solar radiation required instruments which will measure the heating effect of direct solar radiation and diffuse solar radiation measurement are also made of beam radiation which respond to solar radiation received from a very small portion of the circumstance solar sky a total radiation type of instrument may be used for measuring diffuse radiation along by shading the sensing element from sun's direct rays two basic Types of instruments are employed for solar radiation measurement. The first one is a pyroheliometer which collimates the radiation to determine the beam intensity as a function of incident angle. And second one is a pyronometer which measures the total hemispherical solar radiation. The pyronometer measurements are the most common the total solar radiation arriving at the outer edge of the atmosphere is called the solar constant as already mentioned and discussed next we move on to pyroheliometer the pyroheliometer is an instrument which measures beam radiation in contrast to a pyronometer, the sensor disc is located at the base of the tube, whose axis is aligned with the direction of the sun's rays. Thus, refuse radiation is essentially black from the sensor surface. Most pyroheliometer used for protein measurement operate on the thermopile effect and are similar to pyranometer in this respect. They refer in that mechanically they must follow the sun to measure only direct sunlight and avoid the diffuse component. In practice direct solar radiation is measured by attaching the instrument to an electrically driven equatorially mount for tracking the sun. The diffuse component is avoided by installing a collimator tube over the sensing sensor with a circular cone angle about 5 degree. Problem with pyroheliometer measurement are several fold. The aperture angle, the circum solar contribution and Impreciation is in the tracing mechanism. The first two problems are almost impossible to eliminate because of the inability to define the solar disk preciously and the fine dimension of the instrument components. The practical matter of precise taking the sensor orientation are simply great. The use of correction factors in not only involved but somewhat unreliable. The direct solar component on the horizontal surface may also be obtained using a shading ring. This is done by subtracting the shaded that means diffuse from the unshaded that means global reading. Current practice in solar radiometry relies 
primarily on the thermoelectric transducer however relatively low cost photovoltaic transducer are becoming more popular to measure the direct solar radiation the receiving surface must be normal to direct solar rays that means a line joining the sun and receiver 3 pyroheliometer have been in widespread use to measure normal incident beam radiation the first one is angstrometer pyroheliometer about silver disk pyroheliometer ampli pyroheliometer the instruments provide primary and secondary stand of solar radiation measurement first we will discuss about angstrom compensation pyroheliometer in this pyroheliometer a thin black ended shaded strips size 20 into 2 into 0.1 mm is heated electrically until it is the same temperature as a similar strip which is exposed to solar radiation under the steady state condition that means both strips are identical temperature the energy used for heating is equal to absorb solar energy the thermocouple on the back of each strip connected in opposition through a sensitive galvanometer all other null detector are used to test for equality of temperature the energy capital h of direct radiation is calculated by means of the formula this is the procedure to find solar radiation then we move on to solar radiation data solar radiation data are available in several forms and should include the following informations whether they are instantaneous measurement or values integrated over some period of time usually hour or day the time or time period of the measurement next one is whether the measurements are of beam diffuse or total radiation and the instrument used the receiving surface orientation usually horizontal it may be inclined at a fixed slope or normal if averaged the period over which they are average monthly average of daily radiation most of the data on solar radiation received on the surface of the earth are measured by solarimeter which give reading of instantaneous measurement at rate throughout the day for total radiation on a horizontal surface integrating the plot of rate of energy received per unit area per unit time over a whole day gives the langley of radiation received on a horizontal surface it should be pointed out that solar radiation flux is generally reported in langley's per hour or per day that means one langley is equal to one calorie by centimeter square the unit langley has been adopted in honor of samuel langley who made the first measurement of the spectral distribution of the sun for instance the total daily solar radiation received in calcutta the latitude 20 degree 32 minute n on the basis of yearly average is 680 langley 680 calories per centimeter square per day average solar radiation data are also available from maps map can be used as a source of average radiation if data are not available charts are also available for 
clear day horizontal radiation for any period for any latitude maps have been drawn by money and chaco for india they show the distribution of average daily global radiation and the average daily diffuse radiation a typical daily record of the global and diffuse radiation measured on a clear day it contracts to the smooth variation a jack variation with many peaks is obtained on a cloudy or a partly cloudy days a solar designer is primarily interested in the average values of radiation for a location the averaging is usually made over a month and the hourly variation of a global and diffuse radiation the amount of received per day and sunshine hours per day are preferred india lies between latitude 7 degree and 37 degree n and receives an annual average intensity of solar radiation between 16700 to 29260 kJ per meter square per day that means 400 to 700 calories per centimeter square per day the daily solar insulation figure over the different places in india accurately available peak values are generally measured in april or may with parts of rajasthan and gujarat received in over 25100 kJ per meter square per day that means 600 calories per centimeter square per day during the monsoon and winter month the daily solar radiation decreases about 16700 kJ per meter square per day that means 400 calories per centimeter square per day the annual daily diffuse radiation received over the whole country is observed to the about 7300 kJ per meter square per day that means 175 calories centimeter square per day the minimum value diffuse radiation measured over many parts of the country during the november and december are between 3135 to 4180 kJ per meter square day that means 75 and 100 calories per centimeter square per day while maximum value measured for the whole country are about 12550 kJ per meter square per day that means 300 calories per centimeter square per day especially in july in gujarat then we move on to a solar energy collectors A solar collector is device for collecting solar radiation and transfers the energy to fluid passing in contact with it. Utilization of solar energy requires solar collectors. These are generally of two types: non-concentrating or flat plate type solar collector. Second one is concentrating, that means focusing type solar collector. the solar energy collector with its associated absorber is a essential component of any system for the conversion of solar radiation energy into more usable form in the non concentration type the collector area that means the area that intercepts the solar radiation is the same as the absorbed area that means the area absorbing the radiation on the other hand in concentrating collectors the area intercepting the solar radiation is great 
sometimes hundred of times greater than the observed area by means of concentrating collectors much higher temperature can be obtained than with the non concentrating type concentrating collectors may be used to generate medium pressure stream they use many different arrangement of mirror and lenses to concentrate the sun's rays on the boiler this type shows between efficiency then the flat type for best efficiency collector should be mounted to face the sun as it moves through the sky next we discuss about physical principles of the conversion of solar radiation into heat the fundamental process now in general used for heating conversion is the greenhouse effect the name come from its first use in greenhouse in which it is possible to grow exotic plants in cold climates through better utilization of the available sunlight most of the energy we receive from the sun comes in the form of light a short wave radiation not all of which is visible to the human eye when this radiation strikes a solid or liquid it is absorbed and transformed into heat energy the material becomes warm and stores the heat conducts it to surrounding material that means air water other solids or liquid or re radiates it to other material of lower temperature this re radiation is a long wave radiation how temperature on the earth is affected by the greenhouse effect visible sunlight is absorbed on the ground at a temperature of 20 degree celsius for example emits infrared light at a wavelength of about 10 micrometer but co2 in atmosphere absorbs light of that wavelength and back radiates part of it to earth co2 does not absorb the incoming sunlight which has a shorter wavelength hence the solar green house effect brings about an accumulation of energy of the ground glass easily transmits short wavelength radiation which means that it possesses little interference to incoming solar energy but it is very poor transmitter of long wave radiation once the sun's energy has passed through the glass windows and has been absorbed by some material inside the heat will not be re radiated back outside glass therefore act as heat trap a phenomenon which has been recognized for some time in the construction of greenhouses which can get quite warm on sunny days even in the middle of winter this has come to known in fact as the greenhouse effect solar collectors for home heating usually called flat plate collectors almost have one or more glass converters although various plastic and other transparent material are often used instead of glass a black painted plate absorb the incoming sunlight about it is fixed a plate of ordinary window glass when the temperature of the black plate increases it emits an increment of thermal heat in the form of infrared light the black absorb as the property of black body ideal black bodies have not only the highest absorption but also highest emission coefficient for all wavelengths of light 
emission increases with temperature following t power 4 law the emitted light if so progressively shorter wavelength and greater energy as the temperature of black body increases this is expressed by Wien's law which may be written as and called as lambda maximum into t is constant the value is 2989 micrometer kelvin capital t being the surface temperature of the black body and lambda max the wavelength at which light emission reaches a maximum the sun emits radiation like a black body whose surface temperature is about 5700 degree celsius this corresponds to maximum emission of 0.5 micrometer a black body at room temperature emits radiation with a maximum at about 10 micrometer which is within the spectrum of invisible of infrared light the ordinary glass plate fixed above the black plate in a greenhouse has a spectral absorption which can be the profile plastic is very very similar thus glass which is relatively transparent for visible light is absorbed for the infrared light emitted by the black plate when it evocated its thermal energy the infrared light absorbed by the glass is in all direction off of its emitted to the outside and lost the other half re-emitted towards the black plate which absorbs its gain more and more heat is accumulated in the way in the black plate whose temperature thus increase equilibrium is reached when the energy gained by absorb visible light is exactly balanced by the loss of energy through infrared emission of the glass plate with rising temperature the wavelength of the infrared emission become shorter at 200 degree celsius the maximum radiation is emitted about 6 micrometer compared with 10 micrometer at room temperature finally at about 500 degree celsius the bulk of radiation would be emitted at 4 micrometer at which wavelength glass is partially transparent for infrared light Thank you.